You see, for me, in an odd way, these characters that you've made who have, like Eric and Cosmopolis, a world surrounding them of measuring devices, um, stock market quotations, instantaneous access to data, um, they are the opposite of Mr. Tuttle, who doesn't know how to use what he has or what it means, and he seems to be the necessary concomitant, you know, the equal but opposite, the wordless thing that is moving in its helplessness as these characters become moving in their terrible recognition that they are not helpless, you know, that there's something horrifying um, about how post-human these people recognize that they've become in the way that Mr. Tuttle seems in some way pre or per. He is, he is innocent of, of post-humanity, totally, and reminds me at times of, of characters in Ratner Star who seem to struggle against language, although at the moment I couldn't name any particularly, but I just know there there's some kind of affinity there. Well, it's almost as if the solution to the language illness is autism, both in Ratner Star and in the body artist, and that the alternative, you see, I think, in... Um, underworld seems to be to move back to childhood as it is in um, Cosmopolis to go to the barber shop where your father first took you. For me, when I read those things, I say impossible, and I don't believe that Don DeLillo believes it, that to be um, a Steinbeck man, a neighborhood man, a naturalist, or even a Kerouac would solve the language sickness. I think that the much more rich solution for me is the solution of the mysterious object, the autistic object turned human, and that this is um, very hard to speak about, that the books are built around a muteness, and that this was why they couldn't ever be spoken about, and you used to prefer not to speak about them. If I understand it, you had a card that said, don't talk to me about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. You know, the, the card uh, really doesn't, doesn't apply to, to such matters, but um, it has been interpreted that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, the body artist is about time, it's about language, it's about human grief, very much so. And, and the possible connection between between grief and disconnected language. And I think some readers have interpreted that as, as meaning that Mr. Tuttle is not a real person. He is a figment of the main character's grief at, at the death of her husband. Um, I, but I, 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 I see him as real and um, as, a, as a kind of dead end or or one step beyond all human striving toward expressibility what what do we express finally at the end of it all a kind of muteness perhaps that's where we begin and that's where we end well it it, it interests me because you know we're dealing with a situation of post something or other, post-communication, post-humanity, something horrible. And the solutions seem to be in nostalgia for childhood um, or a simpler state, nostalgia, taboo, or whatever. Um, and, and that's why I found Mr. Tuttle, for me, much more interesting as a possibility at least for the imagination, than the barber shop or the old neighborhood. Um, and I acknowledge in its way that the autistic child is an equally sentimental figure, and yet it's a sentimentality that appeals to me more deeply. 
I felt very much at home creating Mr. Tuttle. See, he, um, there, is, there is something about him, or there is something about me, perhaps, in him, that allowed us to, to respond to each other in a curious way. I had much more trouble creating um, the main character. Well, not that much, but, but he, he lived for me from the first moment in his inability to express things, in his elusiveness, in his difficult, in his difficult entrance into a room, in, in the difficulty he had in, in taking a step across a, a, a threshold from one room to the other. This was um, totally believable to me and um, sad but brave in a curious way. <laughs>